feminist technology scholars have shown that gender stereotypes play an important role in limiting the opportunities of women in tech. One of the explanations for the underrepresentation of women in the computer field is the association with the culture of hackers and also with the geek stereotype. This portrays computer scientists as being very nerdy, antisocial and obsessed with computers. Even though this is not an accurate image of people working in the computer field, it still has particular gender consequences. Studies have shown that women cannot identify with this image. They are more likely to conclude that they do not belong in the computer science field because they do not have the same relationship to the computer. But let's take it one step further and find out where these stereotypes come from. Well, first of all, they are reproduced at the societal level through parents, education and the media. Think about the toys you played with as a child. Toys aimed at boys are more aimed at problem solving, whereas toys aimed at a girl audience, they are more aimed at household tasks and beauty. The idea that computers are for boys became a narrative and also digital skills are often evaluated aligned with a gender binary, which classifies men as being more technologically competent than women. A second aspect that we have to take into account is the historical invisibility of women in computer programming. Chances are that you are not familiar with the women shown on this slide. Even though they were really pioneers in computer programming, in the history of computing, the accomplishments of these women are often left out. This also means that women have fewer role models that could encourage them to enter the ICT field. But what does all of this tell us now about journalism? Well, of course, these stereotypes also sneak into journalism and there they result in a subtle bias towards the digital expertise of female journalists. Coding and development, for example, are sometimes called the geeky part of journalism and they are constructed as male areas. In qualitative research, female journalists have indicated that their digital skills are often questioned or underestimated and they are considered less legitimate than the skills of their male counterparts. It looks like there is a coding ceiling emerging in journalism. And although this seems like a, a completely new barrier, it has many parallels with traditional gender-related obstacles. For example, if you look at the glass ceiling, which refers to gender stereotypical parent thought patterns and management capacities and ideas about the, the two of them, which result in the misconception that women are less competent or less suitable for leadership positions. And there is another familiar barrier that pops up when we ask questions about gender and technology. And this one has to do more with the uh, accumulation of digital skills. Digital expertise is often not attained in the newsroom or in higher education, but through self-study. Experimenting with new digital tools is often a matter of trial and error for journalists. And there is really a, a broad spectrum of training possibilities that are external, such as online courses, MOOCs, hackathons, conferences or evening classes that journalists could attend. Although these, these training possibilities are considered rather democratic because they are open and often free of charge, not all journalists have equal access to them. Obtaining this access, it requires a considerable time investment, which has to happen mostly in the weekend or after working hours. And this intersects with the traditional gender barrier of the work-family conflict the need to stay up to date with the latest technological innovations in journalism combined with carrying a disproportionate share of the household tasks and caring for children makes a uh, result in the fact that female journalists have less access to these educational opportunities.